Right, let's switch gears and talk about 3D printing. At the Consumer Electronics Show last year, um, the first booth that we went to, they had us sit down and they scanned the inside of our ears. They proceeded to use the 3D printer to create these earbuds so I could listen to music um, and they fit perfectly in my ear. This technology will radical change the way, radically change the way uh, hearing aids are, de are designed. The last time I was in Korea, uh, Young Suk took me to a shopping center where they, they, took, they had me stand in this photo booth and they had me pose and then they proceeded to 3D print a little statue of me about that tall. Charles Hull is the guy who started the 3D printing industry back in the early 1980s. Uh, printing with things like acrylic and plastics, but now we have over uh, several hundred different materials to print with. We can now print things with wood fiber called smart wood. We can print things with macadamia nut shells and even instant iced tea. We can print things in smart wood. We can create things that are impossible to create with the old traditional methods. This is a wall that's actually printed from sand and it has very interesting heating and cooling properties. Uh, Carnegie Mellon University and the Disney Corporation have figured out how to 3D print with wool and they're actually able to 3D print entire teddy bears now. Imagine going into a clothing store 10 years from now and the first thing you do is you step into a body scanner and while you're getting your body scanned, you pick out whatever styles, colors, and fashions you're interested in. So these are examples of dresses that have been 3D printed, um, much more uh, complicated and sophisticated than anything we can make with needles and thread today. You can see from this video that, um, that they've improved these, these fabrics in dramatic ways. And this is a fashion show that was recently conducted with all 3D printed clothing. But it's not just your clothing, it's also your shoes. I don't know anybody that doesn't have problems with their feet. So imagine having your feet scanned and having the shoes fit perfectly when you first try them on. Not only can you print your own shoes, you can actually design your clothes, design your shoes to fit your personality. You can do things with them that are impossible to do today and every shoe is going to match the things that you like. Contour crafting is a form of 3D printing, only it's printing with concrete and, uh, and actually building buildings with it. As you can see, this is putting layer upon layer of concrete uh, to actually construct an entire building. A Chinese company a few months back announced that they were able to 3D print 10 houses in one day. Uh, this company called Winsun, they were the first in the, in the world to actually 3D print an entire house. And then a few months back, they announced that they had 3D printed an entire mansion and also a, a four-story building. So this is what people are imagining a 3D printed house uh, setup was going to look like where you set up uh, a rig around a construction site and then you print the entire house in a single day. As printing technology gets more sophisticated, you're not just printing the structure, you're also printing the wiring in the walls, the plumbing in the walls, the cabinets in the kitchen, the, the toilets and the sinks, all of these things all printed together. In fact, if you, um, if you get tired of the house you're living in, all you have to do is grind it up and reprint it. This is radically going to change the entire construction industry. But there's probably an interim step before we go to that and that's we'll probably be printing 3D printed bricks and then having machines put the bricks in place. Um, I'm showing this animation here of an Australian company that's figured out how to how to automate the brick laying process. And if you see the way this works these bricks go onto this, um, onto the system and it takes the bricks individually out to the, uh, the end of the construction area and it places them one at a time very quickly and uh, you construct your building. So this is all laser controlled so everything gets put into place um, so it's all very exact. 
So this, these are pictures of the actual machine. And the key thing about this is that this is a very sophisticated piece of equipment that can lay a thousand bricks an hour. Once we're able to actually print our walls, there's no longer a need for flat walls. Every wall can become an artistic centerpiece. Architects are gonna love this because they can create freeform structures that are, um, they're unable to create with any other construction methods today. Our very definition of what a home is, what an office is, what a condo is, all of these things are going to change uh, with, along with these construction methods. 3D printing is also being used in, in different bio areas. Uh, this is an example of a guy 3D printing a vein for surgery. Professor Lee Cronin from the University of Glasgow believes that we're gonna be able to 3D print all of our pharmaceutical drugs, all of our pills. So today, um, doctors are able to prescribe pills that are 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams when the ideal dosage for you might be 148 milligrams or 357 milligrams. We're not able to work with that level of precision yet, but this is a process that could change all that. This is a, a company uh, in Belgium that already makes uh, a 3D pill printer. It doesn't work the way Lee Cronin had described it, but they, they already print pills, but they also print the packaging for the pills as well. We're also getting into printing organs, and this is gonna take a while, but on the right is the example of 3D printed bladders and then kidneys and also an ear.